On today's show, we are doing a complete overhaul on an Ender 3. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to the first layer. My name is Richard Cleveland. I'm your host here three times a week. And what we do on this show is we explore the world of 3D printing. If you're new here, do me a big favor. Go down and hit that subscribe button. Also, click that little bell so you get notified every time that we do a brand new episode. So let's get on with what we're doing. My good friend Raymond Emsley brought me his Ender 3 and asked me if I could do a complete overhaul on his particular printer. Now, as we know, the Ender 3 does not have a great motherboard in it. It is an 8-bit board, but there's not a lot of room for upgrading. So if you wanted to add a BL Touch like Raymond has already done here on his, or you wanted to add silent stepper drivers or things like that, you can't do that on the regular board. You're going to have to upgrade. So that's what we're going to do today. We've got a 24-volt power supply that we're using, uh, just the stock Ender power supply, but we are going to be changing some things on this, starting with the motherboard. And the motherboard that we are going to use is the MKS Gen L motherboard. This is a very popular 8-bit board for this particular printer. The casement that we're using uh, to house all these parts um, is by Michael over at Teaching Tech. He's got this up on Thingiverse. We'll leave a link down in the description below. And uh, I like the case. It's pretty simple. It's a direct replacement for the case that's already there. The only thing that we're going to have to do is add a fan here. Maybe we can use the fan that we've already got. Now, the other thing that we are going to populate this board with is 2208 stepper drivers. And we have to do some soldering on this, so we're going to show you how to do that as well. And uh, we'll get these onto the board. We're going to use these on the X, Y, and Z. And then we are going to use an LV8729 uh, stepper driver for our extruder and I'll explain why we're going to do that when we get to that point um, We are also going to be adding a touch screen and we printed off a mount and a housing that we found on Thingiverse Again, I'll leave the link down below so you guys will be able to see that as well and go and check that out um, The touch screen is really nice. It is still going to give us uh, the ability to both have an SD card on the side and then a uh, input for whatever we need that input for. Oh, and by the way, we're going to be changing out the existing Hetzfang hardware that is on there. Now, Raymond did a great job on doing some of his own upgrades and he's a very competent guy. The one thing that he didn't do was he didn't print these in ABS or PETG. He printed them in PLA. So. We're going to replace the PLA parts that Ray printed, and we are going to replace them all with uh, ABS, black ABS parts. So, lots to do. Let's jump into getting started. So, when you're going to go ahead and solder, if you don't have yourself a, a breadboard that you can put this into, you can always use um, the board that you're going to be using uh, as a control surface to flow your solder onto all of your pins. Now, with these 2208 stepper drivers, there's definitely a top and a bottom. And they, if you have to solder your own, they are labeled. This one has top, and on that side, there's no top. So you want the top facing you, and then go ahead and start flowing some solder into there. We're gonna grab our soldering iron. We're gonna put it on that first pin, and we're gonna flow a little bit of solder in there. There we go. And that's all there is to it. Now, I'm going to go down the line and do all of them. And when I'm done, we'll come back and we'll start configuring this board to be working with 1 16th steps. All right, so we've got all of our pins soldered now, and we are ready to remove these out of their holders. You just want to be gentle when you're taking them out. So you try not to bend the pins. We're just going to put them over here on this, this mat. 
Now we have to configure the board, and how we're going to do that is by finding our tweezers and getting our jumper set up. Okay, let's go into a close-up here so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So on these boards, you have jumpers. Now, in order to make this a 1 by 16 steps, um, what we're going to do for the um, 2208 stepper drivers is we're going to remove the last jumper. So we'll remove that on each one of the X, Y, and Z. There we go. I got a stubborn one that doesn't want to come off. There we go. So now we've got those all configured for 16 steps. And now we're going to set up the extruder. Now in the extruder's case, it's a little different. We want to take off the first and second jumper. There's one. And there is two. Now, when we look at this board, we want to make sure that we put our potentiometers um, in the right orientation on these boards. You're going to see that there's a ground pin, and I'm not sure how well that's going to come out on the camera, but maybe I can move back here a little bit. That's focused a little better. So we have a ground pin that's right up here in this top corner, and you may want to look at the board or you may want to go ahead and pull up a diagram. This pin right here is your ground pin. It's the very last one on the black side. The very last one. You want to put ground to ground and drop that stepper driver right in there. And we're just going to go ahead and populate the rest of them. We'll put the heat sinks on and then we're ready to apply some power to this board and start to um, adjust our potentiometers. All right, so we've got a power supply. We've connected it to our board. The only thing that we're going to do right now is we're just going to adjust the potentiometers. Let's see what their voltage is first. And how you do this is you want to set your uh, multimeter to um, right around 200 volts. 20 to 200 volts, doesn't matter. And you've got a black and a red lead. The black lead is your negative, so we're just going to put that on the negative terminal on our power inlet. Now the plus we're going to put right on top of that potentiometer, which is down in that hole. And you can see on the screen right now that it is 1.1 volts. Now that is far too much for what we want. So we're going to take our screwdriver for the potentiometer. We're going to carefully slide it in there. Get it into the groove and we're going to turn counterclockwise give it about a quarter turn and check it now normally if i had the right probes i'd just be able to attach a probe to the end of of the screwdriver and i'd be able to tell where i'm at and that would be a lot faster and right down we're down to 0.6 which is just about where we want to be we'll just give it another quarter turn there or just a hair turn and we'll see where we're at and there we go we're right on 0.5 that's exactly where we want to be with that stepper now we're going to go through and do all the rest of the steppers and then we will be back with okay so we've set all of our stepper drivers now to 0.5 volts um, which is just fine for these motors that are on the, the stock Ender 3. And now we're going to go ahead and start to incorporate this into our main setup. So first and foremost, the first thing that we want to do is get rid of the stuff that we don't need off of our desk. Clean up a little bit. And then we will start tearing apart this Ender 3. All right, so we've got the old board out. We've taken off the housing and the board and the whole nine yards, and we've just put this aside now because we're not going to need it for a while. Uh, we're going to go ahead now and uh, install our MOSFET. 
And the reason that we're installing a MOSFET on this, just extra insurance. Um, with this particular MOSFET, which is from Large, it has all of the wires that we need to get everything connected right there. So we're going to go ahead and start connecting everything up. I've started to label some of these lines so I know what is what. Um, I know that this line right here, of course, is my power supply line. So this is going to go into my MOSFET by going into the side that says heated bed. And if I look at that and I say power to power, I'm going to, and these, these particular ones, uh, if we go to the close-up camera there, these particular terminals, um, they are set up to have spade connectors put onto them. Uh, we are not going to put spade connectors on today, or maybe we should. Just to be on the safe side, maybe we will. Even though what they've done here is they've gone ahead and tinned the end of these wires, uh, we're not going to um, deal with that. We're just going to go ahead and cut that off and just take some of that wire back and then put on our own crimp connectors. Well, we got... Quite a bit done today. We installed the board. We hooked up most of our connections. We've got a few connections that we still have to worry about, such as the MOSFET. We've got to hook that up. We've got to get the thermistor hooked up for the heated bed as well. Uh, then once that's done, we're going to add the touch screen, which is right here. And we're going to add firmware to the board. And we're going to show you all that in our very next episode. So. If you got something out of today's episode, by all means, please go down, hit that subscribe button, and hit that like button or thumbs up, and uh, we will, uh, and leave a comment, by the way. We uh, do read the comments when we get time. Uh, it is quite busy around here, as you know. And uh, we are going to move forward on this guy next week, so you don't want to miss that. That's when all the really important stuff comes. We've printed the box, we've got the, the MKS board installed now, and all we've got to do is some minor things and then get his pets fang all set up and we'll leave links in the description down below on where to find all this stuff and uh, we'll go from there so until next time i want to thank jess Cornaching, who's right there behind the board and i also want to thank spool 3d print it right print it with spool 3d they've got everything that you need from printers to parts and accessories as well as filaments so check them out today at spool 3d.ca and print it right print it with spool 3d now that's pretty much the show. And this is my bronze me. Say hello, bronze me. Hello. Okay. That's it. We're done. I need a raise. So until next time, my friends, make sure that you continue to watch the show and join us back here. And remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. Get me a coffee.